Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. Welcome to physics class. Today we are going to be looking at shunt and multiplier and this is an extension of the electricity we have been going through. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define shunt and multiplier and then state the properties of shunt and multiplier and solve a few problems on shunt and multiplier. If you look at the screen, you will see G. This is um, a galvanometer and that is why it is written as G. Most of them are written as a V. So when you see the ones with V, you know that that one is a vo voltmeter. When you see the one on A, you know it's an ammeter. Voltmeter measures the voltage or the PD between two points, while the ammeter measures the current flowing in a circuit. Now, there are some currents that are very small that you can have like 0, 0.00 ammeter. In that kind of values, you use what is called galvanometer to measure it. And some, of, some other ones can also measure a very low voltage, like 0, 0.00 voltmeter. In that case, we also use voltmeter to measure it. Now, there are, there are times when you have to measure a current that is bigger than what you already have. In a real-life situation in, in some companies or some workshop, we use a multimeter. Because in that one, we have ohms. We can use it to measure resistor. You can use it to measure current. You can use it to measure voltage. But then, in a laboratory, where we are talking about this galvanometer and some of the current that are too small, we use a shunt and a multiplier in order to help that particular galvanometer to measure something bigger. Just look at it this way. You have a weight. You have a spring that can carry only 50 kg. If you put 100 kg, it will be too much for it. So what do you do? You add more spring in order to help it carry a more load. That is what shunt and multiplier does. And if you look at this, sometimes in this question, we are going to be, you are going to be hearing full scale deflection, full scale deflection. What you are seeing here is what, exactly what full scale deflection is all about. So it started from 2 and it goes way back to the end, to 5. So that is it. I want to welcome you to this class as we get started. Now, when we have this a shunt, look at the way it is. One thing I want you to know about this shunt is, first, you have to know how it is connected. And two, you have to know the properties. Now, if you look at a shunt, you see that it is a parallel connection. And this is the shunt. Look at this one. It's a shunt. And if you look at them very well, you realize that there is this IG, which is the current flowing through the galvanometer. And there is this current which is flowing through the, the, the shunt or the resistor of the shunt, yes. And there is this current which is flowing in. And at the end, this whole system has been converted to be an ammeter. So what shunt does is to measure a current. Now, but before I go further, I want to make you know that when we say that something is connected in, in parallel, this is a galvanometer, then this galvanometer, what do we do? A current is flowing in here. So the current coming in here is so much that the galvanometer will not be able to accommodate it. What do we do? We measure or we connect another resistor. This is how it is in the book. We measure another resistor called shunt. What does this shunt do to divert this excessive current that we're supposed to go here? Because in an in a parallel arrangement of cells or resistors, what happens is once a current enters a junction, they divide themselves. 
Corden just behaves like water or human being. Wherever there is a path, human beings will just follow. That's how current behaves. Or water. Anywhere there is a channel for water to flow, water must surely pass through it. But that's not really how voltage behaves. So the current flowing through the galvanometer will be different, and the current flowing through the shunt is going to be different. And that is the essence of having IG and IS. So parallel arrangement or junctions in a circuit divert current and divide them in different places. I don't want to go further to Kirchhoff principles of current or Kirchhoff voltage law. However, just know that for any junction, current divides. Now, if you know that current divides itself in a parallel circuit, then what is the voltage or potential difference property of a parallel circuit? It's simple. The voltage across the galvanometer must be the same voltage across the shunt. This is what we are going to be hearing throughout this class because that helps us in the proof of the relationship we are going to use for solving problems like the jam and wire exchange. When you have this principle, then it becomes easier for more problems. Now, let's look at the properties of this shunt because in industry you may be asked to construct a shunt to help a galvanometer. What do you do? First, in choosing a shunt, you have to know that the shunt is a low resistance wire. Remember we've learned electricity on wire, we talked about the resistance of a wire. So what determines, I want to ask, if I, you, you are asked what makes a resistance or a wire to have a low resistance, you know that the resistance has to be very thin, have to be very small because we say that resistance is inversely proportional to the area. What is this? The cross-sectional area of the wire. That is the thickness of the wire. So if the thickness of the wire is very small, then the resistance is going to be high, right? So if the thickness of the wire is very big, then if this one is very big, then the resistance is going to be low. So for you to have a low resistance wire, then you know that the thickness should be high. So that is one thing you should know about the property of a shunt. Number two, this shunt is used for measuring current. So if you go to where they are working electronical appliances, you, before you use their meter, you have to ensure that it is connected to the current for you to measure current. And how do you measure current? By connecting your meter in series with the wire or with the circuit. So it's not voltmeter where you connect across. We are going to look at them all. Then it is connected in parallel to the galvanometer. So like we are seeing here, this is the shunt. It is connected in parallel. And finally, like I said earlier, it diverges a large current away from the galvanometer to avoid damage into the system. That is the property of a shunt. Now, when we talk about a multiplier, we are talking about a system or a device that measures a voltmeter. However, there is a galvanometer that measures a very small volt voltage, but when you now add another resistance, it helps the galvanometer to measure a way bigger voltage than it, it used to measure. That kind of arrangement or helping things or aiding is called multiplier for voltage. Now, what are the properties of this multiplier? Number one, it has to be a very high resistance. Remember what he said about determining whether a resistance is very high or low. Number two, it's used for measuring voltage. So you can't use this multiplier, you can't use it to measure current, it must be for a voltage. And number three, it is a, oh, I've said high resistance, and it should be connected in series. So vot, um, this multiplier must be connected in series, just like this. This is the resistance, high resistance, it must be connected in series with the galvanometer. Look at the galvanometer. So when they are connected in this format, we now know that you have a multiplier. So there are many questions that will be coming. How do you connect a multiplier and how do you connect a shunt? And the answer is what you are hearing. Now, let's look at the first calculation and the principles are going to be sure. The first question says, a, a galvanometer of resistance, 5 ohms, has full scale deflection for a current of 100 MA, I'm going to show you what is MA, 
how would its range be extended to 1.0 ammeter by placing a resistance of okay so we are looking for the resistance of such now the question you should ask yourself when you have this question is is this a shunt or is this a multiplier now what is he measuring the first question is is he measuring current or voltage if it is measuring current you know that it is shunt if it is measuring voltage you know it is multiplier now let's take the parameters and see how we can deal with this question now a gavometer of resistance 5 ohms so look at this this is the gavometer like i said and it is connected with a shunt in parallel so the resistance of the galvanometer is there so what happens current is going to flow in through this junction and there will be a diversion there is a current coming which is the total current that the system is intended to measure so when it gets to this junction what happens the current subtracts the value of the current of the galvanometer which is going to be the value of the current of the shunt and i'm going to make this relation the current of the shunt is going to be equal to the current through the system minus the current through the galvanometer so that is the value of the diversion of the current which the shunt is intended to do so what do we do further then i'm going to say that the resistance of the galvanometer is 5 ohms Now, the current through the galvanometer is 100 milliampere. When we hear the word milli, it's a, it's a scientific prefix, which means 10 raised to the power 3. Just like when we talk about K, you are talking about 1,000. So when you see 100 milli, we are going to do it this way, times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this is 10 raised to the power 2 is 400, times 10 raised to the power minus 3, which is going to be 10 raised to the power minus 1 ampere, which is something as... 0 0.1 ampere that is the current flowing through the galvanometer now how would its range be extended to one ampere so the total current flowing into the system is just one so i'm saying one ampere that is it now the next thing is if you look at this circuit you realize that this is a circuit for parallel arrangement now what is the condition for parallel arrangement the condition is simple that the voltage across the galvanometer must be equal to the voltage across the shunt. So the voltage across the galvanometer, according to Ohm's law, Ohm's law states that the current is the that the, the PD is equal to current multiplied by the resistance. So the current of the galvanometer multiplied by the resistance of the galvanometer is equal to the current of the shunt. This is the current of the shunt multiplied by the resistance of the galvanometer. With this formula, you are good to go. So let's put it here. Current of the galvanometer is given as 0 0.1 times. Resistance of the galvanometer is 5, which is equal to current, which is 1 minus current of the galvanometer, which is 0 0.1, or multiplied by the resistance of the shunt, which I am looking for. So the resistance of the shunt is going to be 0 0.5 all over 1.0 minus 0 0.1 is 9, 0 0.9. So this is going to be 5 over 9 ohms. So that is the resistance of the shunt. So it's a very low resistance. That is it. Why is this? Look at the question now. Very low resistance and the one for the galvanometer is very high, which is 5 ohms. We have another one, a moving coil galvanometer of 300 ohms resistance gives full scale deflection for 1 milliampere. The resistance R of the shunt that is required to convert the galvanometer into 3 ammeter is. So, this same question is similar to what I have given. If you use this formula, let me write it as the way it should be. So if you have resistance of the shunt is equal to resistance or the current through the galvanometer, resistance of the galvanometer all over current minus current of the galvanometer. This question can be solved.
with this. So let's look at another one. Okay, this question has to do with the multiplier. So how then do we deal with this? A moving coil meter with an internal resistance of 100 ohms has a full scale deflection when a current of this flows through it. What value of resistance would convert it to reach 10 volts at a full scale deflection? All right. Remember what you want to measure. You said what value of resistance would convert it to reach 10 volts at a full scale deflection? All right. Now, what we are given is internal resistance of this, and that is the resistance of the galvanometer. So what you should know is that if this is a galvanometer, and this is the resistance called the multiplier. Now, this is a series arrangement, and for any series arrangement, something is very sure, that the current flowing through the galvanometer must be the same current flowing through this one, because it's just a path. Whenever there is only one path for current to flow, then the current must not change. Unless there is a junction, then current will divide, just like it did in the parallel circuit. Now, but then something has to change. Something that changes is the voltage across the galvanometer, which I'm going to call VG. The, the, the voltage across the galvanometer is not the same as the voltage across the multiplier. So this is going to Vm, which is the voltage of the multiplier. But the current remains the same. So how are we now going to find the voltage, the total voltage between this and this? And that is going to be total voltage. I'm going to call it as Vt. is going to be voltage of the galvanometer plus the voltage of the multiplier. And the, two, the sum of them will give you the total voltage in this whole system. Now, according to the question, before I go further, I have to bring in Ohm's law for the voltage across the galvanometer and the, and, the, and the Ohm's law for the voltage across the multiplier. Now, according to Ohm's law, he stated that V is equal to IR. So I'm going to model it. VT is going to be I, which is the same, times the resistance of the galvanometer plus current times the resistance of the multiplier. So if I factor them out, I'm going to have that current is the same, but then resistance of the galvanometer plus resistance of the multiplier are different. So what am I going to do? I will now look at the parameters. The internal resistance is simply means R of the galvanometer, which is 100 ohms. Then a full scale deflection when a current of, so that current is 10 milliampere, which is 10 raised to the power 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 3, which is 0 0.01 ampere. And that is going to be the current flowing through the system. So I'm going to call it I, which is 0 0.01 ampere, which is the I here. And then what am I looking for? I know that VT is 10 volts. Then I'm looking for the resistance of the multiplier. So I'm going to say that 10 is equal to, because this is this, is equal to this, 0 0.01 bracket 100 plus this Rm, because I'm looking for the Rm. So I have that this divide by 0 0.01, 0 0.01. This will cancel. We have 0 0.01 is something as saying 10 divided by 1 over 100, which is 10 times 100. And this is 1,000, which is going to be 100 plus Rm. Therefore, Rm is going to be 9, no, I will say 1,000 minus 100. So Rm is going to be 900 ohms. This is the resistance or resistor of the multiplier, which is needed to be connected to this circuit to help it have a full scale deflection when a 10 volt is flowing through it. 
All right. Thank you for being part of this class. But remember, before we go, we have to take a few more exercises from Exam Guide app. Okay, we have the question here in UTME. It's a, a galvanometer with a full scale deflection of 10 milliampere is to be converted to a voltmeter with full scale deflection of 5 volts. If a series resistance of 498 ohms is used for the conversion, the resistance of the galvanometer is. All right. So, um, you simply put that total voltage is equal to current bracket resistance of the multiplier or the galvanometer, yes, of the multiplier plus resistance of the galvanometer. This is the equation for the multiplier. Now, the current is 10 milliampere, so I'm going to have V, and the V is given as 5 volts. This, so this is 5 volts is equal to 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 3, all brackets. 490, 498, this is 498 plus resistance of the galvanometer. So this is 5 divided by 10 raised to the power minus 2, which is equal to 498 plus resistance of the galvanometer. So this is the same thing as saying 500, because 5 divided by 100, divided by 1 over 100 is going to be 500, which is divided by 498 is going to be resistance of the galvanometer. So resistance of the galvanometer is this. Oh, <laughs> not division. So um, I'm going to, this is going to be 500 minus 498 equal to resistance of the galvanometer. So resistance of the galvanometer is given as is 2, 2 ohms, because 500 minus 498 is 2 ohms. All right, I'm picking C as the option there. I'm going to the next one. He said an ammeter of resistance 5 ohms has a full scale deflection when a current of 50 milliampere flows in it. The value of the resistor required to adapt it to a measure of current. Okay, thank you. This is a question on... So this is a question on... This is a question on shunt. Now, an ammeter, and so what is the formula for shunt? Resistance of the shunt is given as current of the galvanometer and the resistance of the galvanometer all over the current through the shunt, which is this. All right? According to what we have done throughout the lesson. Now, an ammeter of resistance, 5 ohms. So that RG is going to be 5 ohms. Then the current of the galvanometer is going to be, what are we looking for? The value of the resistor, okay? Now, the current of the galvanometer is going to be 50 milliampere. And then adapt a current of 5. So the current, I, is going to be 5 ampere. So resistance of the shunt is going to be 50 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. That is this milliampere. We have done that throughout this class. Then resistance of the galvanometer is going to be 5 all over 5 minus 50 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So let's go. Resistance of the shunt is this. This is 50, 50 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 is 5 times 10 raised to the power 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this is 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2, which is 500. No, which is going to be 0 0.05. So this is going to be 0 0.05 times 5 all over 5 minus 0 0.05. So this is going to be 5, 2, 0 all over 5 minus this. 5 minus 0 0.05 is something as same 5.00 minus 0 0.05. So this is 9, and this is 10, and this is 4. So we have 59.0. So this is 0 0.95. So the resistance of the shunt is going to be 
So we have 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.95. 0 0.26, do we have that? Yes, 0 0.25 ohms. That is it. Um, an approximation issue, but the same thing is 0 0.25. And that is the answer. And the option there is A. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that will benefit from it. Bye.